Imagine losing $1.6 million to scammers. Hard to comprehend, mm. right? But for our next guest, it's their reality with a 95-year-old great-grandmother losing her life savings. Sophisticated criminals impersonating bank staff, grooming their victims for months on end, calling, emailing and even providing fake brochures to persuade victims to transfer large lump sums into holding bank accounts. And they walk away with millions. We're joined by victim Harriet Springs live in studio and former finance professor Kim Sawyer live in Melbourne. Thanks for your time. Harriet, I'll start with you. You lost $1.6 million? Yeah. How did that happen? Uh, it was a really uh, long-term uh, thing with the, uh, had a caller back in November last year just called me out of the blue I'll never quite know how he got my number he said he was George Thompson from the ING bank and over the coming months as my mother's house went for sale and and then uh, settled he just built my trust over time mm. I completely thought he was from ING I had no reason to believe he wasn't when you discovered that uh, the money was gone tell me what that what that was like if you don't mind sharing oh. I just, obviously the, the world just fell out mm. from under me. I just felt sick. I felt utterly responsible. I felt duped, foolish, um, ashamed, like a lot of shame associated with it. And I think that's why a lot of people don't come forward and talk about it. We often talk as well about the role banks have to play here. They knew about your activities all this time and never really raised a, a question with you? Yeah, so these are end-to-end -end transactions. It's a transferring bank and a receiving bank um, and I put down the BSB number and the account number and what I thought was my name attached to the account uh, and I explained and it's a weird situation how it happened it was an ING account holding a fixed term deposit account but it was a, um, a holding account in Westpac the scammers convinced me and it sounds implausible now but I told my mother's bank, Teachers Mutual Bank, that this was an ING fixed term <coughs> deposit, but it was being put in the Westpac Bank. Mm. I was asked, oh, that seems strange. And I said, yes, they've explained it. It's a holding account. Now, someone with basic training from the bank would have known that ING mm. don't bank with any other banks. Mm. And they should have said, I believe. The, re the reality yeah. is that the, the responsibility is falling on mm. you Completely on victims. situation. Yeah, yeah. That, and that's what the banks do. It's 100% blame on the victims and they minimise their own liability. I'll mm. circle back to you in a sec, but Kim, uh, you're an academic and even experienced something very similar yourself uh, mm. when you were scammed out uh, of a truckload of money. Uh, what happened to you? Uh, yeah, we were scammed uh, uh, sort of about half of our uh, pension uh, funds at the time. Um, so our, our scam was about two and a half million dollars. Um, so we had a similar scam to what Harriet's talking about. So. Our scam involved um, transfers from our accounts, our pension funds, to what we thought were our pension fund. We were given the BSB numbers and account numbers. We thought we were transferring it to our pension fund, but in fact it was to these mill accounts that the scammer had set up. So, so our problem was, was similar to a lot of these. They're called authorised push payment scams. And uh, they started in the UK in about 2016. They started to migrate to Australia about 2020. Um, Australia was seen as a bit of a soft target and um, the banks haven't closed enough of the gaps, the loopholes. So hang on a second, but, but you're, a f you're a finance yeah. expert. Y you know this. Um, <laughs> uh, and, yeah, and that's so, right. Yeah, how did well, it happen? Not, not expert enough, obviously. Yeah. Um, uh, we, 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 all, the, all the documentation we, we thought we were doing with, with the banks. It took mm. 75 days, we, we're dealing with seven banks in this case, mm. three, three source banks and uh, four receiving banks. So it took 75 days for only the first bank to detect it, and they detected it because of the large transactions in and out of the receiving, count, uh, receiving accounts. So it was a, you know, the, I'm not, I don't hear the dump on the banks, but clearly the systems are not robust enough. They, they are not uh, tracking the uh, the money laundering and that's and that's a big problem for us and, and that's the part I think the public doesn't quite understand because obviously yep. these scammers are becoming much more sophisticated yep. able to even con you despite your extensive knowledge in finance and why yep. the banks aren't up to speed with that is the concerning part here why don't they have the process why aren't they investing in this mm. I mean it's the primary cause of unrest at the moment mm. with their customers yeah that's right um, 
I mean, our situation was was very specific. We were overseas at the time, um, so we couldn't have been contacted about it. We, we were first contacted when we were overseas. Um, so basically, the, the problem is the banks haven't closed the loopholes. They do it for credit card scams, but they don't do it for this. So we're pushing for a reimbursement model. The UK, the, the banks reimburse the, uh, the customers who have been scanned. In the US, 75% of the banks reimburse the customers as well. But Australia mm. reimburses at a rate of about 5 to 6%. Yeah, it's not enough. Harriet, what, what would you tell people out there? What would you do? Um, I guess just be super wary and we're, we're seeking that the banks um, sh or, or some sort of system should be compensating. Mm. The, the banks are, Kim's got this great saying that um, the banks don't commit the theft but the, uh, they certainly drive the getaway car mm. and they need to be held responsible for being complicit with this money laundering. The government also needs to step up. Yeah, absolutely. This mm. can't keep happening. All right, Harriet, mm. Kim, thank you both so much. We're so sorry for what you've experienced. It's terrible. Yep. Hey there. There today, fans, Sarah and <laughs> what's my name again? Oh my God. Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports, and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?